Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. This is not only the largest tablet ever made, but it's also one of the most expensive, but I anticipate it will also be one of the most dynamic. Now with that out of the way, I did purchase this. This was a pre-order. It just arrived today on Saturday, a day after launch. So if you were wondering where my coverage was, it's beginning now. So there are three different models you can go with uh, when purchasing one of these, and I'll include links in the description. I decided to go with the middle option, and that's because I find it to be the most attractive in terms of pricing and what I anticipate will be performance. Now the entry level model, uh, gives you 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM. Then you can step up to this, which is 1200 US dollars, which gives you 256 gigs of internal storage, along with 12 gigs of RAM, which I anticipate will be more than enough. And then last but not least, you have the highest end model, which will set you back $1,400 before tax, you heard right, which has 512 gigs of internal storage and 16 gigs of RAM. Now this is a very large tablet with its 14.6 inch display, not 4K, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but still a super AMOLED, so expect really good things when it comes to that display. Of course, we have an S Pen as usual. I expect this to be one of the really nice uh, overall experiences with this new larger display uh, that we have on the Tab S8 Ultra. Uh, some paperwork in here, uh, and what I anticipate will also be a uh, SIM slot tool so that you can uh, add internal storage, and that's because all of these models give you the ability to throw in a micro SD card. So really this is about picking uh, enough storage for what you anticipate you'll actually end up using. Again, in my case, I would have liked the 512, but I do think that Samsung uh, got a little bit piggy uh, on that price point. I mean, for a 512 gig tablet, granted, Apple kind of set the stage for making these things incredibly expensive. It didn't mean we had to go the route of Apple. So let's see if I can open this without tearing it apart, but in all likelihood, I'm going to end up tearing it apart. And I'm really excited about this because it has taken a decade for any manufacturer to bring us a tablet that is larger than the old Toshiba Excite. And for those of you unfamiliar with it, which is probably the majority of you, the Toshiba Excite launched again in 2012. I did cover it. I really liked it. It was powered by an NVIDIA Tegra CPU. And unfortunately, it just didn't work out very well. But what I can say is that that 13 inch tablet now finally has something larger than it on the market 10 years later. So for those of you that thought, you know, Apple's iPad Pro line was the largest tablet ever made, uh, it wasn't. It was that good old Toshiba Excite, and now we have something even bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this on. That is the power button that my thumb is pressing right now. And I'll give you a tour around uh, the bezel or the sides of the device. By the way, this device is incredibly thin, uh, very lightweight. You're looking at 1.6 pounds, five and a half uh, millimeters thin or thick, depending on your mindset. Power button, volume rocker, microphone, another microphone, your SIM card slot right there, AKA micro SD card slot for storage expansion. You can see I've already got the display. That notch I'm gonna be talking about because if you follow my channel, you know notches are not uh, something that I'm willing to tolerate. In this case, uh, we are pushing the envelope on tech and I have made an exception. Now, whether or not this will end up being a keeper for me, that notch is going to be a major challenge, but I'll get back to that. Going around the device a little bit more, uh, on this side, which is the right side, you can see we've got some speakers as well as our Type-C port for charging. This does have a fairly large battery, uh, over 11,000 milliamp hours. So let me mute the robot. I am expecting really good battery life out of this. Um, as you can see down here, we've got our pogo ports and essentially the docking area for the keyboard dock that should be arriving tomorrow. Uh, again, this was all pre-ordered, but just didn't get here for launch, unfortunately. But not so bad to be a day or two late, better uh, than not at all. And then here on this side, we have two more speakers. Now the audio performance on this tablet should be excellent. Uh, I mean, that is what I anticipate, uh, just like the cameras. And that's another really nice part of the brand new Tab S8 uh, Ultra. So on the back here, we have two, okay, two different cameras, uh, one being traditional uh, and then the other being ultra wide. Uh, there are also two on that notch, 
but all of them, from what I've seen, have really good quality. So two 12 megapixel shooters on the back and then a 13 uh, and a six megapixel shooter on the front. I may have inverted those. Um, we are not looking for this. So let me go ahead and close that out or actually just get rid of it all together. Uh, but the whole point here with the experience you're getting is something that will be far better for content consumption than the traditional form factors uh, that we've gotten used to. Uh, in addition to that, we've got uh, basically, in my opinion, forget that it's the thinnest tablet, which does come at a price. Uh, part of making this so thin meant that uh, there are thermal issues that will have to be combated, which means you know, we're not going to get full performance out of that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU, which is brand new, and it's exciting. Now, the talkback feature I'm not accustomed to running into, uh, but let me just, uh, I digress here for a second. It says to turn it off, touch and hold with two fingers for five seconds. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe I have to hold the actual button, but it looks like that did it. And let's close that. So what I think about really overall build quality here, it's all really nice. One of the big complaints I've been seeing is the brightness of the, of the display. Now the display, as I mentioned, not 4K, it's a little under th uh, 3K. And again, a 14.6 inch Super AMOLED 16 by 10 aspect ratio. People are complaining that the brightness, which is a little under 400 nits, isn't enough. Now, I'm all for more brightness. Uh, do I think that's going to be the game breaker on this device? No. If anything, the notch is a bigger problem than the brightness level, and I can tell you that based on what I'm looking at right now. But let me go ahead and just start this off. Uh, I think that the cameras are a huge upgrade. And if you know anything about Samsung tablets from at least the previous two generations, I'm not expecting any of you to go back as far as I have, uh, which is the beginning, then you know that they've made some really nice tablets with the Tab S6 and the S7 line and, of course, the S7 Plus. I really think that is where Samsung really started to shine. They already made good products, but that was the, the S6 was the first time where all of a sudden, with the incorporation of DeX, and uh, the keyboard kickstand, you really had something that could rival an Ultrabook. So let me go ahead and agree to these terms. I'll agree to all, even though I generally wouldn't. Uh, and let's go ahead and get into the experience. And what it comes down to is that, you know, some apps are not, let me go ahead and log on to my Wi-Fi network here, are not optimized uh, for Android tablets. And that will be another one of the chief complaints of the majority of complainers. And I'm totally understanding of that. But I think because this is the first Android tablet that I can remember in years past to sell out, I think we have a legitimate opportunity of seeing broader support. I mean, this is the type of thing that could turn the corner for developers to say, you know what, we have to start making more apps optimized for the experience on Samsung's tablet lineup. And that makes sense. I mean, the reason that Apple has gotten such uh, broad app support is because of the number of units they sell. And if this is the first device that Samsung can sell at a similar rate, which so far it's seeming like we might be headed in that direction, then they may finally, they being you know, the developers, may have to finally jump on board with giving us something more than iPad Pro. And by that, I mean app support. So. I really believe that this should have started with the Tab S6 uh, because that was, in my opinion, the best Android tablet ever made. And obviously the 7 just built upon it. And now here with the 8, specifically in the ultra capacity, we're moving in that direction. So what should be great cameras, by the way, I didn't mention the fingerprint scanner. The reason you don't see one on the side of the device at the power button like a two-in-one is because it is under the screen. I believe it's located right around here. Uh, it's on the right side towards the middle of the display. The bezels also got incredibly small. If you didn't notice, uh, they shrunk even more. I mean, I have my Tab S7 Plus right here. And just to give you a quick look at that, uh, which I will do right now, you can see the bezels are thicker. You know, they're not incredibly thicker, but definitely thicker. And just to give you an idea on the size, I will go ahead and do this, even though I'm not in love with putting glass to glass here. And you already see how big of a jump we have made from the Tab S7 Plus to the Tab S8 Ultra. And it is a big difference. Uh, so when it comes to consuming content, when it comes to multitasking, which, look, I love that these products are capable of multitasking, but let's get real. Uh, you really do need a larger display, in my opinion, to take advantage of multitasking in 
at least a capacity that I think is realistic. Uh, now, for any artist utilizing this, the S Pen is going to now, I think, get even closer to its full potential. And let's say you don't care for the 120 hertz refresh rate, dropping it down to 60 may impact battery life. I mean, I'm going to find out, obviously. But uh, the S Pen does offer, in my opinion, one of the best uh, pen input experiences that you can get. And uh, if you're an artist, uh, which my fiance is, we will be finding out what performance is like. Now, I'm not expecting it to blow away the Tab S7 Plus, but having the additional uh, screen real estate, I think is going to be a really meaningful uh, difference between the previous generation. So I'm skipping all these features because I just want to get to using the tablet and I'll get towards you know the point of making it my own soon enough. But for the time being, I just want to get us to uh, the desktop, so to speak. And another nice element of this is that, of course, DeX with this screen real estate should thrive. And I'll end up doing a demo on that for those of you unfamiliar with DeX. It is uh, essentially the alter ego of Samsung's uh, tablet line where you go from mobile operating system to something that mimics uh, the Windows desktop experience. And that is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to get around the fact that Android apps still, and this is not all of them, but many are not tailored to a tablet experience. Um, you don't have to do that because One UI does have ways of scaling things for you. Um, but that requires the user going in and actually setting One UI to alter those things. If you want it to be naturally done, DeX is going to be the way to do it because there you're going to have Windows. You're going to, uh, by Windows, I mean windowed uh, experiences for things that you open up. So they're not going to take up the entire display unless you tell them to. Uh, and obviously, when paired with the keyboard, that's going to make this device a really strong competitor for Ultrabooks if you're not tied to using, of course, any specific operating system. Now let's max out the brightness on this. It's still because we have a dark background, which definitely will optimize battery life, still is you know, not necessarily flexing that, but let's go ahead and get on the internet because that will, and uh, I will let Google track whatever they want at least this time around. So, for all the people saying not bright enough, it's certainly bright enough for my camera, as you may have noticed, it's getting blown out completely. And the argument here with the brightness is that if you can see what's trending, oh, what a world we live in, the Pokemon Go crap is way above uh, what's happening with Ukraine. At any rate, I mean, look what comes up second. These are the trending searches. Welcome. Oh, you can't even see them. I forgot. It's too bright. Let me go ahead and bring it down so you can, because after all, those jokes shall be lost. Um, on all of you, uh, but now you can see it. And yes, what a world we live in. At any rate, uh, going on, what a mix of stuff there on the trending searches. The idea is really simple. Uh, if you want to use DeX, you can. You can have a desktop experience with this. Uh, I highly recommend the keyboard. I feel like not having it, even though it's incredibly expensive at $350, not having it uh, does you a disservice. Let me go ahead and correct what's going on here with the brightness because it's getting a little bit annoying. Uh, so basically, you know, what you're going to get out of that keyboard is turning this into an ultrabook. And like I said earlier in the video, if you're not tied, or I should say married to the option of, or rather to an operating, uh, you know, system, specifically Windows or Mac, then you're going to find utility in this. It is going to essentially uh, be a Chromebook of sorts, uh, but possibly even with a little more capability uh, than the Chromebook. So it's all a matter of how you look at it. And that's why for me, you know, I know many users out there are gonna see this. In fact, many reviewers were already going down this road and they were saying, well, it's really, and you can see it's hard to, to make that reach, right? It's really just a larger version of last year's hardware. And I don't buy into that. You know, a lot of people are saying that simply because they think it's not going to appeal. And boy, did they misread this situation because this is now, at least as I mentioned earlier, to my memory, this is the first in many years in the Android tab tablet world to sell out. And to then couple that with that it's the largest and most expensive Android tablet, I think it's obvious that Apple users are looking at this saying, you know, Apple hasn't made any larger moves than that iPad Pro. They haven't given us a larger tablet. And now finally someone is. This is kind of like the folding devices, folks. These are the type of devices that get people to say, I don't care about whether or not Apple's making it anymore. I want something new, something interesting, something that's going to make me feel like I'm actually spending my money on something new. And that's what this does. Now for me, again, 
It gives me what I've been waiting for for 10 years. In fact, when we talk about uh, Microsoft and the Surface lineup, I've also been saying for years there, Microsoft has a major miss by not making the Surface Pro line larger. Yes, they finally got to 13 inches, congratulations, but they could have easily made things larger many years ago. After all, we got a Surface Book with a 15 inch display many years ago. So the opportunity has been there. Obviously, marketing has told these firms, marketing research, people don't want this. And well, Samsung sales numbers on this appear to be dictating what the market really is after. Now, I'm going to speak briefly about the cameras, and then I'm wrapping it up, because this was supposed to be a quick unboxing, and there's nothing quick about what I'm doing here. I mean, these sort of tests have gone the way of the Dodo. We don't really need to test that out. We know we've got smooth scrolling. It's a gorgeous display. I knew this coming into it. And while I would love to have 4K, if it's the difference between this thing making it through a day and not, I'd rather it make it through a day. After all, there's no point to this device if battery life can't back up the experience. Now, the notch. You know, Samsung themselves was mocking Apple when they first did this. And granted, this is a much smaller notch than what Apple has been living and dying by for years now. I mean, the notch is arguably one of the ugliest um, things that could be introduced. And now Apple has gone as far as throwing them into their MacBooks. And while many people will excuse it, I am not one, nor will I excuse it here for Samsung. Uh, it disappoints me. It's really just Samsung trying to make the bezel smaller and smaller because, again, they think that is what they need to do in order to make all of you happy. Now, is that actually true? Well, that's a whole nother story, and I'm not going to get into that. Personally, I would have rather had slightly thicker bezels and a clean display that has no notch coming into it. I mean, that's just me. I would have much rather had that. Now, will I get used to this? Like Apple users got used to it. In fact, some Apple users pretended they liked it. Uh, regardless of any logic. Uh, and, you know, is the display large enough to make you look past it? Possibly. I think that's maybe the best pitch for this device is that it could be big enough that you could say, you know what, it doesn't bother me because even though it's cutting into the display, the display is so much larger than any other tablet. I mean, Apple topping out at under 13 inches. Um, and of course, the step down here from Samsung, a little over 12 inches. Maybe they're willing to put up with it. I think the biggest trade-off here possible is that the camera quality could be so good that you could look past it. Of course, their excuse, as I mentioned, was that had they made the bezel uh, you know, larger, they could have accommodated them. But to make it as small as it is, the camera module had to protrude into the display. Now, from a design language standpoint, aesthetic standpoint, and just you know, consistency, I think it's a terrible idea in every way. And I don't, you know, Apple made this possible. They, I give them credit where it's due, both good and bad. They made the notch a thing. Samsung mocked it. Samsung's got the pinholes and now we've got notches. And unfortunately, I'm worried this is going to, you know, translate into more devices than just this tablet. And it may very well do that. Hopefully it will not, uh, but it's possible. And that's not something I'm excited about, clearly. Let's go ahead and try to jump onto the Digital Digest. I'll do a little audio playback without any, uh, you see what comes up, the Digital Divide, uh, without any sort of copyright issue. But again, you know, some people have also complained about this being too large to actually handhold. I don't agree with that at all. Um, I think it's perfectly fine. I think over a period of time, yeah, it'll get heavy, but I don't see an issue. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the ThinkPad that I unboxed the other day. Let's get the volume all the way up so you can experience this because I've only heard good things about the speakers. I had a little bit of a delay there. Get out of the ad. I'm going to bring this right up to my mic. And here with the Digital Digest. And today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad P17 Gen 2. Now this unit just arrived from Lenovo for review purposes. All right, we, we know the drill. The retail price on the specific configuration is roughly five thousand U.S. dollars. I will include. Go ahead and skip forward. For those of you, we're talking about architecture. You have so much expansion uh, and just overall capability. This is this machine means business. There's no other way of putting. It. Now. Uh, the speakers sound excellent to me, and I could already see how someone could look at this and say, you know what, this may be my alternative to an Ultrabook, because, 
you know, kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And then I have not mentioned another great feature that I plan on testing for those of you that are wondering, using this as a secondary wireless display for your laptop. So that's another great appeal. I review a lot of portable uh, monitors that are 4K. I haven't gotten an OLED one yet, but they're out there um, and they're very expensive. And when you think about that, that those 15 inch touchscreen OLED monitors, granted they're 4K, are anywhere between six and $800 and this will act as one, that is a really big appeal, in my opinion. Now, it's not 4K, but the resolution is still solid. You still have touchscreen input, so it's got a lot going for it. Now, how much latency there will be, that's another story. Um, when it comes to you know how this operates, there's nothing else in this, so I can't swipe and show you more apps, but when it comes to how this performs, I mean, everything so far is nice and smooth. That's expected. Gaming on here should be really nice if you have uh, something like the Xbox uh, Game Pass, which I do, the Ultimate, this could end up being a, a bit of a dream device there. You know, if you want to stream uh, and game on something like this, you know, granted uh, the Steam Deck should be coming soon, this has that 14.6 inch display that, from what I can see so far, is gorgeous. I've got to spend more time with it, but things look good, and again, really smooth. Everything I expected. The S Pen, though, could end up being the killer app, because... Uh, when it comes to taking notes and utilizing this, I really think that that extra screen real estate is going to be the game changer. I mean, it's just, it's not even a matter of comparing it to the Apple Pencil, uh, because again, Apple doesn't have screen real estate like this. And, uh, you know, it's often lauded as the best uh, pen input experience out there. I know that this is very close behind it. Uh, and then Surface Pro comes along. So it'll be really interesting to see how well this performs. Um, you know, it's matured for many, many years. I was a Note user basically through every generation. Granted, I did skip a little bit uh, because some features were redundant, but now we are at a juncture where this has really matured and it gives an experience that Apple doesn't when it comes to, you know, actually writing on the display and feeling pen resistance, you know, emulating that feel of writing on paper. Uh, Samsung brought that in a few generations back, and I think it made a big difference, but I'm not an artist. I will defer to the artist of the house when it comes to how this performs, and we'll probably end up doing an inking demo with this because Sammy just does a great job with that S Pen. But stay tuned. A lot more coverage coming from this device. It's exciting. Like I said, I've been waiting a decade for somebody to make a larger tablet than that good old Toshiba Excite, which I'm sure some of you, again, are very familiar with, and others are just scratching their heads saying, Toshiba made tablets? let alone they made a 13-inch tablet in 2012. Yeah, they saw the future. They just didn't, they were a little bit uh, ahead of their time there. And now they're not in the game at all. But that rounds it out. Uh, what should be a great processor, even if it does get throttled for this form factor? Uh, solid amount of RAM. Again, I don't think you'll have a problem with the entry level at 8 gigs, but I'm accustomed to 12 gigs in devices like my Z Fold. Uh, so I already know what to expect here. I don't think 12 will not be enough. Uh, the, the storage expansion capability, you know, you pick up one of these guys, uh, you're in business, you won't have any issues. You can get a one terabyte of, uh, you know, storage from SanDisk, PNY, those are not expensive. I mean, they're under $200. That pretty much will fix your, your storage need. But again, make sure you have enough internal storage for apps to run because those SD cards are not going to be anywhere near the speed of the internal uh, storage on these devices. And hopefully that battery can make it through the day. Um, I'm going to find out. Stay tuned for an update. I may have one for you today, a little bit later. Uh, it may end up coming tomorrow. It all depends how much time I get to spend with it and how much information I can impart on you about the experience and whether or not I think it's worth the money. Uh, very expensive, but I think for many of you that have been waiting for a large tablet that does everything well, this probably is going to be uh, your brand new device. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.